Hi, welcome to Wellness. I'm your host, Linda Lonigan, Senior Clinical Nutritionist. I'm here to show you the very best your community has to offer in health, fitness, nutrition, amazing people, and great events. I'm here with a great person, Anthony Sarika, who is an adoption uh, lawyer. Welcome, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. So you do something very special in addition to being an adoption lawyer. Can you talk about how it started and sure, what you sure. do? Sure. So I'm a Somers resident uh, by way of Staten Island. So my friends would, would uh, give me grief if I didn't mention that Staten Island is where I'm from. <laughs> uh, but uh, my whole life I've always wanted to help children. It's been a passion of mine from when I was teaching basketball at age 12 to when I was coaching a swim team at age 15, 16. So I was tutoring kids in high school right. and even in college. I would have these two kids that I tutor, so my friends would be on, on campus partying and doing whatever, and I'd be going tutoring these kids. I'm like, what are you doing with these kids? And I'm like, well, I'm helping them. They need help, so I'm helping them. Um, so after that, I went to law school, and uh, I graduated law school in 2006, um, kind of fell into my career as a real estate attorney, but my passion was always helping families. And throughout that time, I was still volunteering my time to help kids in need. Uh, once my son was born in 2012, I decided I wanted to do something with my career that I was more passionate about because I wanted him to grow up seeing that his father was passionate about what he does. So I started volunteering. Um, my first volunteering uh, position was with the New York Foundling, which is in Manhattan. It's one of the oldest charities in New York. They help underserved families all throughout New York. And I was on the junior board. Uh, my duties as a junior board member were basically raising funds for the New York Foundling. And interesting enough, they, the New York Foundling uh, um, sponsors a camp, which is located right here in Westchester. Wow. So once, once twice a summer, we would okay. go up as a board and yeah. we'd go and just hang out with the kids, hang out at the camp and play games with them. We'd do, they'd have an open house. They'd do an open mic. We'd, we'd do all sorts of you know interesting things with the children. So... Well, around that time, again, I, when I was looking for to, to move towards my passion in my legal career, um, looking for more volunteer opportunities, I came across CASA, which is Court Appointed Special Advocate Program for Children, and it's run through MHA, MHA of Westchester, which mm -hmm. is down in White Plains. Mm -hmm. But it's a national program. Okay. So what we do is they would give each CASA volunteer a child or you know someone to work with, and we just make sure that child had the proper clothing, they were eating correctly, they sure. were they were taken care of. Yeah. You know, they just had someone on their side, an advocate. Sure. Um, so during that time of volunteering, I veered off my practice a little bit into what's called adoption law. It's a niche area of law. Right. Um, I help families find children, whether that's through independent adoption or through foster care adoption. Yeah. And it's just been a great journey. So I've been doing it for about six, seven years now. And I just really love what I do and helping families and helping children. And, uh, you know, I hope to continue doing it. And maybe my kids will follow in my footsteps one day. <laughs> and it's so amazing because uh, you're just an amazing role model to your two boys mm -hmm. and your, your baby. Baby girl. <laughs> um, and in terms of um, just paying it forward, mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. I'm always yeah. saying that um, to my viewers. That it's so important to just do the best we can. I worked uh, with WIC mm -hmm. as a new RD. Mm -hmm. And I remember in Yonkers. And I remember how difficult it was in terms of um, getting them food mm -hmm. that was, you were talking to mm -hmm. me about that mm -hmm. as far as getting healthy food because it was so expensive. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah, we were discussing that and it, it is it is a big issue and there has to be some sort of solution getting the good food into the hands of these kids that need it because especially the kids that I go and visit in group homes, foster care, they're eating, but they're not eating correctly. Yeah. So, and it's hard because what do they enjoy to eat? They enjoy to eat cookies and chips and things right. that aren't healthy for you, but, but right. we all ate them as children. But now we have more knowledge and we understand that that stuff is not good for you because right. it creates bad habits. You bet. Um, so as the, as an advocate, I try to say, well, listen, have this healthy snack instead of having that. There and, you go. You know, we try to bring them, instead of bringing them a bag of Doritos, I'll right. bring them a bag of carrots. Right. So it's just, right. it's just trying to teach good habits. You bet. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and making things simple, um, I was working with a counseling center with um, uh, kids with recovery mm -hmm. as um, drug addiction. And the th simple thing was just keeping it basic. And I created this granola that um, was very easy to assemble and put together, but made big differences. Right. I always say, let's have a nutrient powerhouse 
and keep it simple right, as right. much as possible. But the biggest problem, because uh, I was born in Brooklyn, brought up in Queens, is just being accessible. Mm -hmm to good, great food mm -hmm. because it's much easier mm -hmm. to get Doritos and a can of soda mm -hmm. than it is to find organic chips. All right, right. And you think know? about us, where we come from. We have the finances. Most of us have the finances. Yeah. We have the wherewithal. We have the transportation to go to a Whole Foods or go to right. one of these stores and buy it. These right. kids don't. No. So we have no. to figure out a way to get them into these stores sure you know that's sure. that's a, it's a big problem no it is yeah. and programs are, are short-lived like i said as part of the uh, grant that worked in coordination as an rd for phelps hospital and we were trying to set up um instilling kids or young adults in terms of growing mm -hmm. food mm -hmm. because in their grocery stores they just didn't have on the shelves right. <laughs> healthy food it was yeah. just not right a right popular item <laughs> yeah but it was short-lived. Right. But that's the whole thing yeah. about it. You mentioned about this camp. Can you tell me about this um, camp? Yeah, so it's a camp that the New York Foundling, which is a part of the, the charity that was a part of on the junior board, um, they actually sponsored the camp, and it's also sponsored by the members of Run DMC. And wow. so he would go there, one of the members would go there once a year and just hang out with the kids. So right. it's great for them to, uh, you know, meet one of their idols and someone like in, the, in that star atmosphere and uh, just come down and hang out with them at the camp and have fun. But it's, it's, a, it's a great program. Um, I'm not on the junior board anymore, but, you know, I still contribute and I still, you know, find time to go out and... Uh, and go out and hang out with the kids when I can. That, yeah. That's yeah. so. In addition to being an uh, adoption lawyer, having two boys <laughs> and a little baby, and doing this, when's time for for Anthony? Because you, you well, definitely that, walk that's the walk. The, and right. That's the other time. aspect of, of of health and wellness that um, I try to instill in not only my children but the kids that I work with is mm -hmm. in the fitness aspect of it. Um, most, a lot of the kids I work with are into basketball and they kind of try to pair us up with kids that have similar interests to us. And sure. I, I play basketball twice a week still. Sure. Um, so what, even though I can't help them you know, find those healthy foods all the time, right. I could always pick up a ball and go play with them and shoot around. Right. So just staying active right. is, is one way that they could improve their health, which is great. Yeah. So I'm always like, well, Listen. Let's just go to the park. We'll go shoot around sure. wherever we have to go. Um, you know, I always find like a like a little basketball court, and we'll just go that's, shoot around and, and do whatever. That, so. that that's amazing. Yeah. Because the sports, I was brought up since very young. You know, it instills self esteem, mm -hmm. helps with team playing, mm -hmm. helps with working together, mm -hmm. gets away from the rhetoric that's going on, the mm -hmm. chaos that we're. I miss yeah. right now. Yeah. I'm always uh, sharing when I, I work with kids in terms of with diabetes mm -hmm. or problems with chronic illness, mm -hmm. and I'm always telling them, just try to get out, right. you know, get away from the TV, get away from the video games, mm -hmm. and, and really try to get some fresh air yeah. and either anything. Yeah, even even in our own lives as, as adults and people oh, yeah. with jobs, it's great to just open the door, go outside, and, like, take some fresh air because sometimes when I'm stressed or depressed at work, whatever, yeah. for whatever reason, right. my right. cousin will call me and say, just go outside, go take a walk because yeah. you'll feel better and inevitably it works right you know it's a it just what, right. whatever it does it works when you're outside and it, you just yeah. yeah it gets those endorphins yeah. that journal I mean even your wife who said mm -hmm. runs yeah. with two little kids yeah. six and four and the baby she yeah. runs yeah. which is yeah she great. needs it you need it you need to take care of yourself because then you, you can't take care of the children you yeah. do yeah. and like you said you're a phenomenal role model Anthony mm -hmm. and your wife's doing it as well yeah. as far as you know I'm always saying with the kids and teaching them keep it simple mm -hmm. And, and, and getting back to the basic of a family dinner night, mm -hmm. just sitting down sometime during the week to be able to share as a family right. and establish that, you yeah. know, that solid foundation. And that's, and that's the hard part, too, uh, you know, of, of the kids I visit in the group homes and foster care is they don't have that, right? No. So what I specifically try to do is when I go down there or wherever I go up there, sometimes I have to go to, you know, Poughkeepsie. I'll say let's go out to eat. We'll go to dinner and we'll we'll sit oh, down. We'll so sit down nice. at a restaurant and we'll have a have a meal. Yeah. Because they don't have that. Where when I grew up, we had dinner every day at five o'clock. Right. You know, my brother, sure. my mother, my father. We sat down at the table. We had dinner. You bet. A lot of these kids don't have that opportunity. No. So you know, you try to just give them at least a little bit of it so they understand it. And maybe when they have their own children, they'll be able to you know wow. do the same things. That's yeah. such a big deal. That yeah. really is to yeah. give them that that glimpse. Yeah. yeah. So you're teaching them basketball. Yeah. You're helping them to find better food. <laughs> right. And you're helping and taking to restaurant and yeah. and just giving a, a taste of what's important yep. in terms of, um, like I said, um, I just try to keep it simple. Yeah. Um, and give them exposure. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mentioned to me about a friend of yours that has this restaurant mm -hmm. um, better, and it's all over down yeah. there. Yeah. And 
I have this cooking show, What's to Eat, and my focus is sharing with my people mm -hmm. and my viewers restaurants in the area and mm -hmm. the community that are healthy. Yeah. Farm to table great foods. Yeah, they're out there. Um, we just have to. They just have to get on the map. It really right. is what it is because and, and people know about need to it. find them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So everything in, in what you're doing, you still play basketball two yes. days a week. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I do it when the kids go to sleep. So I try to do even <laughs> even my fitness. Like oh I, I go to CrossFit Mount Kisco in the yes. mornings, and Wonderful. I try to do it before the kids are up. Right. And then I try to play basketball when they're sleeping. So. There's no time for sleeping in my life, but at least I get, you know, my fitness in. So, yeah. Well, yeah. my dad used to say we don't need to sleep. <laughs> right. <laughs> not, not when we're younger. You're right. But um, that's that's wonderful that you do the best. And you mm -hmm. even tell me you worked out this morning. Yeah. Yep. So how many days yeah. a week do you work out? I try to do at least three or four. If I can fit in more, I do. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah. Because I, I say with my patients from my three offices that it, it's really important that what you eat determines how you feel. Mm -hmm. And we get so caught up in this ASAP and chaotic mm -hmm. keep going like this yeah. constantly. If right. we just take the time to say what I eat now might affect me tomorrow, mm -hmm. it might affect my focus or my mm -hmm. concentration or my energy yeah. and how important it is. Yeah. But it's important to find the community because, for example, in my community, at my gym, everyone is eating healthy. Yeah. So it's, it's easy to be involved in that. Sure. If, you, if, if, you're not, if you don't belong you're to a gym right. or you don't you go to play absurd. basketball, yeah. you don't have that community that's no. going to help you and say, all right, you know, I'm meal prepping this week. I'm making this. So you know, you, everyone needs to find that in, for themselves. Absolutely. So, yeah. And that's a very valid point, very mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. point that we do have the accessibility in our area mm -hmm. as far as finding uh, to eating together and, and, and foundation of um, healthy meals and mm -hmm. working towards where a lot of areas don't. Right. Well, I, I have to thank you oh, so much thank you. for being here yes. and, and keep being you. Yeah. I mean, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> I'll try. Really appreciate you being here. All right, thank, thank you very much. Remember when we eat well and feel great, is something we want to do for the rest of our life. Remember, moderation and balance is key. Thank you to my wonderful crew. And remember, the foundation of eating as a family is so vital in addition to just trying to eat healthy every day. Thank you so much.